Lars Vippen has seemingly shaded Kim Kardashian again during the Real Housewives of Miami premiere. Season 4 started streaming recently and in the first episode, Larsa addressed how it felt to have others giving their two cents about her divorce and feud with the Kardashian family. As a photo of her and Kim appears on the screen, she says, People thought I wouldn't make it without Scottie Pippen. People thought I couldn't make it without some old friends. I'm great. I just basically want to, like, live my best life, have fun, do whatever I want unapologetically. She then went on to note that she was trying her best to keep a low profile while dealing with the many issues in her personal life, but added that she was proud of who she is today. Back in 2018, Larza had filed for divorce from basketball legend Scottie Pippen, and then at the same time, rumors of a feud with the Kardashian family happened as well. Fans noticed that Kim, Chloe, and Courtney had followed her in April of 2020, and because of that, this sparked rumors that there was a falling out. Larza then later blamed Kanye West on an episode of the podcast Hollywood Raw. On that show, she claimed that Kanye was the reason that she and her longtime friends became distant. She goes on to say, If Kanye feels like him and Kim are better without me, then let them be without me. I'm okay with that. I will survive. I want everyone to be happy. Although she did admit that she understood why Kim would choose to side with her now ex-husband over her, adding, he talks so much about me being this and that and this and that, I just feel like Kanye was in a place where he really didn't trust anyone with Kim. However, as hung up on all of this as Larsa Pippen may be, the Kardashians have pretty much moved on. Following these comments, a source told Us Weekly that the family was unbothered by her claims and noted that the family thinks she is embarrassing and seeking attention. Super creepy though, they, they kept referring to the Kardashians as the family. Now in that podcast that she did, blaming Kanye West for her friendship breaking up wasn't the only thing that she said. Larsa also alleged that she did Tristan Thompson before Chloe did and said that she had to block Kanye West because he wouldn't stop calling her in the middle of the night. A month before the return of The Real House was in Miami, Kim and Lars's friendship of, or lack thereof, resurfaced again because Adriana Demora name-dropped Kim while insulting Larza. She says, you left this group of women come back with a butt as big as Kim Kardashian's trying to become the new Kim Kardashian, which you're never going to be. Then on that same day, Kim posted a photo of herself with the caption, they can steal your recipe, but the sauce won't taste the same, which made many fans wonder if Kim was taking a shot at Larza here. Although she later cleared up the tweet and said, no shade throwing, I don't do subs. I want everyone to win. I just had a good caption. Let's start things off at number 10, she parties a lot. We all know that Kim used to be a party girl. I mean, she and Paris Hilton like hung out all the time and they were like best friends. Since she settled down and gone married and had kids, Kim likes to sculpt a very specific version of herself for the media. A version where she seems like a good girl and the perfect mom. But make no mistake, Kim is a potty girl and she goes on benders, often with her sister Kendall. Ugh, Kendall. Of course, most of her partying is done in secret, but her assistants and staff know about it because she comes home. Drunk as f and throws up everywhere. I actually don't know that for sure, but I'm assuming. <laughs> At number nine on our list, the crying is fake. There are so many pictures of Kim Kardashian crying on her reality show, her crying face has become a meme. You can literally buy clothing with Kim's crying face all over it. I kinda want it. But all this emotion seems to be is just an act to boost ratings on Keeping Up With The Kardashians. Almost every episode, Kim cries over like, really dumb <laughs> jewelry going missing, or maybe she'll cry about like scandalous photos being released of her in the press when she posts scandalous photos of herself on her own Instagram. But when she's at home and not on camera, she hardly ever cries and has quite thick skin, according to her assistant. In at number eight, she acts like a tyrant. Okay, there's a difference between thinking you like a queen boo and like having self-worth and acting like a tyrant, especially when it comes to how you treat your staff. Kim ordered Stephanie around day and night and working for her wasn't glamorous. Stephanie never had a break and she would be the one blamed if any anything bad happen, like a flight got delayed. She said, with all that glamour comes schlepping the bags and suitcases and taking the fall when the car doesn't show up or the flight is delayed or something goes wrong. I fail to see how it's your assistant's fault if the flight's delayed. Are you f***ing kidding me? The flight's delayed? This is outrageous. How could you let this happen? Like, what is she supposed to do about it? I'm sorry, Kim. Don't hurt me. Don't sit on me. <laughs> In at number seven, she's mean. Okay, listen, I think all of us can be mean once in a while. Maybe we've got mean thoughts about people or we say things that we don't mean, mean things that we don't mean. On Keeping Up With The Kardashians, Kim comes off as this really sweet person. But when the cameras aren't rolling, a different Kim comes out. She's reportedly rude to staff who have a hard time being around her, especially when she's in a mood. And apparently she's also quite rude to her mom. This was a quote that Kris Jenner posted on her Instagram. Apparently this is something that Kim said to her. No more Pilgrim Adam's 
family outfits. You have exhausted this look. Move on. We need chic, tight dresses, not this Amish stuff anymore. I don't know about you guys, but I would never say something like this to my mom, even if I didn't like her outfit, which is like some of the time. But if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. In at number six, she doesn't have friends. They say that as you get more and more famous, you get more and more lonely and isolated. Kim used to have high profile celebs on her list of friends like Beyonce. Stephanie revealed that Beyonce and Kim are feuding and often badmouth each other, which hasn't become known because it's done privately in their homes. Stephanie also said that Kim has a hard time keeping friends because she thinks she's quote, better than everyone else. And she tries to be better than everyone else too. Some other celebrities that Kim has cut off include Jordan Woods, Black China, Taylor Swift, and Drake. It's easy to judge someone who's got a big ego, but would any of us act differently in Kim's situation? I guess most of us will never know. I mean, I would like to think that someday I'm gonna have 100 million Instagram followers, but like, who knows if that'll happen. Maybe that'll get to my head. Probably would get to most of us, wouldn't it? Um, excuse me, do you know who I am? I have 100 million followers. Let me in. In at number five, she's a slob. Kim's former staffer said there would be old food in the refrigerator. The trash would be overflowing in the kitchen and the bathrooms. No one would go in there. Kim's bedroom and bathroom are beyond filthy at all times, no matter how often they're cleaned by her many maids. So Kim's got a massive closet. I think most of us can assume that by now. That goes without saying. But when she's getting ready to go out, rather than put her clothes back, she just chucks them all over the place and expects people to clean up after her, apparently. Here's a photo that essentially proves that. Her messy house is also seen when when she goes on Snapchat or Instagram stories. Hey guys, it's Kim. Hey guys. In an airport, she's vain. No surprise here. I think a lot of us can be vain from time to time. I mean, when you look like this. <laughs> but Kim's vanity is on another level. She's obsessed with what she looks like. According to Stephanie, she is so vain that she has staff remove plants or objects if they're in the way of a mirror. And while on holiday at Punta Mita in Mexico, Kim took 6,000 selfies on a four day trip. Is that weird? Is that like a lot? <laughs> Stephanie's also seen in some of these selfies. Granted, I kind of get it. Kim's an influencer and all influencers have to do for their job is take photos of themselves. But I feel like 6,000 selfies might be a little much. It's a little bit. And number three, she's jealous of Kylie. Now this one pretty much goes without saying, but there's always been rivalry between siblings. Always. Unnamed staff sources say that when Kylie Jenner was named the youngest self-made billionaire by Forbes, there were rumors floating around that Kim was distancing herself from Kylie and trying to convince her sisters to do the same. After all, if it weren't for Kim, Kylie wouldn't be famous at all and wouldn't have had the platform that she successfully used to launch her billion dollar makeup brand, Kylie Cosmetics. Kim saw how successful Kylie's brand was and then she tried to start her own cosmetics company. Company, KKW Beauty, and uh, it's nowhere near as successful as Kylie Cosmetics. In at number two, she's got low self esteem. Remember those photos from that vacation? The cellulite photos? Yeah, those absolutely destroyed Kim. And I think if our squishy bits were plastered all over every tabloid in America, we would feel pretty terrible about ourselves too. I do have to commend Kim though. Instead of feeling sorry for herself, she started a strict diet and workout regimen. She now works with a personal trainer six days a week. She doesn't eat processed food. She doesn't even eat bread or salad dressing. The only thing that she allows herself to eat on a snack day is like banana bread. <laughs> and she looking good. Mm. And at number one, she's not the mother she appears to be. The picture social media paints of Kim is that she's this amazing mother to her children. But as soon as the cameras are not rolling, Kim has three nannies that are always looking after them. She fits visits into her schedule with her children, but they are very short visits. This is what a source said, and that source also told The Mirror, it's a well-oiled machine with three nannies moving around the house, bringing the kids in for a quick Snapchat with mom, then whipping them away again if they start to cry and make a fuss. There's actually photo and video evidence of Kim being like, not the best mom. There was that time that North fell down and Kim didn't help her up. She just like looked at her phone. <laughs> and then there was also that time that she forgot North in the car. And there was also that time where she forgot North in the hotel and like went out to the car and then went back and got her. <laughs> I actually think she debunked that claim, but you get my point. In at 10, Kylie's butt. The Kardashians and Jenners are pretty well known for having perfectly round bums. But are these bums the result of copious squats, plastic surgery, or something else entirely? Here's a photo that Kylie posted posted with then beau Travis Scott at the premiere of his new film in Santa Monica. At first glance, everything looks lovely. But if you go and zoom into the car next to Kylie, it's definitely distorted to make Kylie's butt look a lot rounder. Honestly, I don't get why she does this. Kylie's gorgeous just the way she is. And she's the youngest billionaire ever. Everyone likes to think that if they had enough money, they wouldn't have a care in the world, but I guess even billionaires have to keep up appearances. At number nine, we got that time that Kim's arm went missing. Back in 2014, Kim was photographed with Jonathan Chabon on a boat in France. 
The caption was, fun night out in Cannes with my best friend. But upon closer inspection of the photo, it became apparent that Kim was missing her right arm. I mean like, where is it? <laughs> it's not there, where did it go? Kim actually ended up editing the caption of this photo to say, um, where's my arm? So there was some speculation that this photo might not have been photoshopped, it could be just one of those weird optical illusions, either that or maybe Kim or Shaban did something to the photo to make his waist look more thin. Maybe we'll never know, but it's fun to think about. In at 8, Kylie Jenner's Turks and Caicos photo. A 21 year old Kylie posted this photo to Instagram next to her friend Anastasia that shows her sitting on a day bed. It was taken on a girl's trip to Turks and Caicos to celebrate the launch of Kylie's skincare line. Everything looks beautiful, luxurious, and normal, right? Wrong! When fans zoomed into the photo, they saw something very, very wrong with the pillows on the daybed. Here's a photo that shows the Photoshop. The pillow to the left and right of Kylie's body is textured with lines. Lines that are not straight. <laughs> this is because Kylie took in the size of her waist, which inevitably changed the shape of the pillow pixels. I mean, listen, we all look chubs when we sit down. I've got some hella rolls myself, okay? Listen, I just really wanted that cheeseburger. Just let me have it. I need my cheeseburgers. At lucky number seven, we got the Keeping Up with the Kardashians Sweet 16 promo photo. Now this photo is pretty famous and iconic, but not because the Kardashians look great in the photo. It's because of several obvious Photoshop fails. First, let's look at Kendall Jenner. It honestly doesn't even look like she was present for the photograph and was just like photoshopped in, like lying down. She's laying on a bunch of silk that doesn't seem to be affected by her body. Like I know Kendall is skinny as f but not skinny enough to not bend silk when she lays on it. Maybe she was busy and couldn't make it to the photo shoot, who knows, but it really doesn't look like she was there for this actual photo. Khloe Kardashian also looks very strange in this photo. I mean like, where's the rest of her body? And don't even get me started on Courtney's foot. Look at this. Notice anything weird? There's six toes. Maybe she actually does have six toes and this isn't Photoshop. But this isn't the only time the Kardashians were called out for feet Photoshop, which leads me to my next point. In at number six on our list, we got the time Kim Kardashian and Kylie Jenner's photographer gave them six toes. This photo was taken as a promotional image for their perfume collab. It's a pretty dope photo, not gonna lie. Huge fan of those one-legged bodysuits, eh? Sexy. Everything looks normal and fabulous until you look down at their feet where they're each wearing open-toed sandals. I mean, listen, I see six little piggies on each of those feet and I've counted quite a few times. There are 12 little piggies in this photo. Kim and Kylie never addressed the claims that they photoshopped their feet, but I mean, why would anyone photoshop feet? I feel like that's weird, unless you have really ugly feet. Next up at five, we're gonna time travel back to a time when Kim Kardashian and Black China were friends. Oh, shots fired. Here they are together in Kim's walk-in closet. Everything looking normal and bootylicious, right? Wrong, I say! When you take your eyes off their butts for one second and look to the left, you can see very obvious distortion of both the door, the carpet, and the tiles on the ground. Either Kim K's walk-in closet defies the laws of physics, or there's some serious photoshopping going on in this photo. Probably to make Kim's waist look thinner, who knows. In at 4, Kris Jenner's flat tummy fail. The whole Kardashian clan have done huge brand deals with scam companies like Flat Tummy Tea, a detox tea marketed to young women that's intended to reduce bloating and the size of your tummy. And also apparently it gives you explosive diarrhea. That's always fun. But a photo posted by momager Kris Jenner intended to show the effects of flat tummy tea was heavily edited and fans were quick to notice. I mean look at that though. It's always easy to tell when something's been edited if the background is all wonky. The counter in this photo is totally distorted because the pixels were moved around in order to make Kris's arms look smaller. Her very flat tummy is also distorted. There's blurred pixels next to it. I mean the whole point of this advertisement is for weight loss. Anyways, I digress. Let's move on. Next up at two, and this one is a doozy. We got the time Kris Jenner reposted a heavily edited photo where an original unedited photo could be seen on Gordon Ramsay's Instagram. All you had to do was just click on his profile and there it was. Gordon Ramsay posted this photo with the caption, great seeing you tonight Kris Jenner, can't wait to read the cookbook. Chris then posted another photo taken at the same time, not the same photo, but it was really badly edited. You can see the difference when you look at the photos side by side. She even took the time to edit Gordon Ramsay's wrinkles, <laughs> but she didn't pick the photo of him with his eyes fully open. And at number one on our list, Kim Kardashian was once accused by her fans of photoshopping her daughter Northwest to look thinner. I will remind you guys that Northwest was five years old at the time. Back in 2019, the Instagram account Fake Girls yeah, posted a before and after of Kim with her kids. Here's the photo Kim posted. Really cute photo. And Kim looks amazing. It was taken by paparazzi during a Kardashian vacation in Bali. Now check out the original photo. You don't see much of a difference, but Northwest's tummy does look a lot 
flatter in the photo Kim posted. Now check out this gif. Yo, that's brutal. Needless to say, when people found out about this, they were pissed, dude. Photoshopping yourself is one thing, but photoshopping your child? It's insane that Kim Kardashian feels like she has to do this in order to keep up appearances, but that sends a pretty bad message to other children. Kim Kardashian shut down the claims that she photoshopped this picture. And instead, she said that she accidentally posted the edited photo without realizing it had been edited. She supposedly took it from a fan account. Who knows what really happened? Starting off with number 10, well dressed. So as we know, the Kardashian family cares very much about their fashion choices, as they're now becoming very well acquainted with high fashion brands and designers. But what you might not know is that they care so much about their fashion that everyone around them must also be well dressed, including the nannies. But this one has a slightly more practical reason than you might think. Basically, the reason they need to be well dressed is because they need to be ready to be photographed whenever they are out of the house. And the looks don't have to be high fashion, they just need to be clean and presentable. And when you think of it in actual practical terms, the Kardashians do have an image to uphold. So it kind of makes sense they can't have any weak links in that image. And at number nine, no limits. The life of a celebrity can involve a lot of chaos, especially when dealing with kids. But one thing that's very important is that the nanny can work under pressure and keep their cool when shit's going down. And that involves doing things that might not be considered part of their regular duties, with the nannies even having to take care of the Kardashian pets some of the time. There was even one crazy rumors that the nannies need to be available to give their arm for makeup swatches if any of the Kardashians are in need. And that might actually be the craziest thing I've ever heard if that's true. <laughs> Up at number eight, not attractive. So this one to me is kind of a no brainer, not gonna lie, but Kim has a specific rule for her family that none of the nannies are to be attractive. This rule came into effect after Kim had her third child. And I guess around this time, a little more spice was needed in her and Kanye's relationship, and she didn't want it coming from the nanny. And this makes just so much sense to me because of the amount of partners that have cheated with the nanny. I would also probably avoid hiring female nannies too, if I'm gonna be honest with you. As I said before, back in about 2017, Kim and Kanye were on the brink of separation, as Kim thought Kanye was not putting enough into their relationship and was spending too much time in the studio. And obviously an attractive woman in the house during all this could have been disastrous for the relationship. And at number seven, working 24 seven. This is one I'm not really shocked by and I would assume is the case for practically any celebrity of that caliber, but they are on call every second of the day. And this 24 seven rule of course applies to vacations as well because when the Kardashians wanna relax, they give their kids to the nanny. I'd be really curious to see if the nannies actually have any fun on these trips or if they might just be more stressful because it's a new place and there might be more work, especially if the less nannies come. I'd love to know the logistics on that. <laughs> and at number six, audition for the part. As you might expect, you're gonna need a lot more than a resume and an interview to get this prestigious job. So along with the normal hiring process, the candidates are expected to go through a sort of audition process as well. The usual hiring process starts with an agency selecting their best candidates, then having interviews with them. Once a few are selected, they are then brought to the Kardashians for the audition. This audition is held to examine the candidate's personality, fashion sense, and intelligence. And it's a lot more in-depth than typical questions about just work experience and stuff like that. Halfway through at number five, can't be on the show. The Kardashians are famous for their incredibly successful reality TV show, so it makes sense to wonder if the nannies might ever be on the show. But the answer is a firm no. Even the kids don't really make that many appearances on the show, but when they do, you will never see the nannies with them. This is because for security reasons, the Kardashians don't want anyone knowing who their nannies are if they can help it. Also, for the image of the show, they would much rather seem like they take care of their own children than admit that in reality, they have a lot of nannies that do the heavy lifting for them. And lastly, they don't want their nannies to think this will be a job that will get them fame, as they don't want there to be any distractions when taking care of their most precious possessions. Up at number four, no pictures. This day and age, we all have our phones with us, basically 24 seven, ready to record anything that happens to us at the drop of a hat. But if you're working for the Kardashians, you are not allowed to take pictures of anything ever, especially the kids. And there are a few reasons for this. Firstly, the nannies simply aren't allowed to use their phones at all during work hours unless it's an emergency, so that all their attention is on the kids. 
Then the next reason has more to do with the fame aspect, and this is the fact that any pictures of the children are very precious and can be worth a lot if sold to any media outlets. So if there was a leak in the photos, the Kardashians would assume that the nanny was going behind their back for some extra cash. So basically if the nannies decide to take any pictures, they better also expect to be fired. And at number 3, no jewelry. After Kim's horrible experience in Paris where she was brutally robbed for her jewelry, she's realized that having flashy items is just not worth risking her safety anymore. And she's passed this rule onto her children as well. And this is a rule that the nanny nor the children can ever wear jewelry, especially during the daytime. And they simply believe that jewelry makes people the easiest target for theft. As when you're a Kardashian, people might think it's far more valuable than it actually is. And you can be putting your life at risk because someone thinks they can make a fortune off your jewelry. And at number two, fashionable kids' outfits. So I said above that the nannies are expected to wear fashionable clothes while they work, but this also applies to the kids as well, because the nannies are the ones that are dressing the children a lot of the time. The nannies are expected to dress the kids in fashionable clothing. One big reason for this is that their business is around clothing, and if they can dress their children with Kardashian branded clothes, they can gain a lot of publicity for free. As well, the outfits of the children are heavily scrutinized, so there needs to be a lot of care taken with how they're dressed. Think back to that scandal I told you about a while ago about Kim dressing North in a corset that got huge media attention and Kim was mom shamed through the teeth for it. And since Kim was the one that dressed her, she had the power to defend her decision on social media. But if a nanny was the one that dressed her in something that caused that big of a scandal, she probably would have lost her job. And finally, number one, no questioning. The first and arguably most important golden rule of working for a Kardashian is that they are your ultimate boss and you must do literally anything they ask of you. That even includes them being your ultimate boss in life, with their needs coming before your own family's needs. But the most important part of this is that you can never talk back or question any decision that they make. And that might mean you don't want to dress one child in something because you don't find it appropriate, or you might not approve of the fact that Courtney lets her kids sleep in her bed. But whatever your thoughts and feelings are, even if they're looking out for the best interests of the child, they must not be told to the Kardashians.